Well, it's time for me to get back to working on the bridge port. And in order to do that, I need to get the head off of the ram. And I also need to make a bracket that I can mount this to my workbench and make it easier to disassemble. A while back, I made this tool to help me put the head back on the ram so it was off the floor. Now I'm going to go ahead and use it to get it off. It fits up into a three quarter inch collet that I then tighten down with the draw bar. I then use some T nuts and some studs, uh, and then I'm using some hold downs as spacers in order to expose some more thread to securely bolt this down to the table so it can't move. With my removal tool held in place and secure, um, I'm removing these four nuts that are on the ends of uh, four very long bolts that attach the head to the ram. And with those freed up, I just need to pull the saddle forward and the head comes along for the ride. I'm going to reuse these bolts in the bracket that I'll make to uh, secure the head to the workbench. Well, taking from the list of things I've never done before, I'm going to flame cut this piece of quarter inch plate in order to use uh, the pieces for a bracket that I'm going to mount to my workbench that I can then mount the head to. I may get some comments that I'm doing this wrong, and they're right. Uh, I'm sure I'm not wearing the right attire. Uh, I'm not holding the torch right. Uh, this did not feel comfortable. Um, I did the best that I could, but I did have a fire extinguisher and somebody watching out for me uh, on site. So uh, if anything went wrong, we could take care of it, but nothing went wrong. That actually startled me a little bit, first when the flame popped out, and secondly when it restarted again. Um, saved me the trouble of having to use the flint. This first piece will get four holes drilled into it for the head bolts and then I'm making a second piece um, as sort of like the L of the L bracket. I, I will say that these cuts were terrible and I spent a lot of time cleaning up the edges to make them presentable. So I had to grind off so much junk that this ended up being a little narrower than I had hoped. But I think I have enough room to go ahead and drill the four holes. 
Incidentally, if you've watched any of my other videos, you may have heard that familiar hissing in the background. Rest assured, it's just a infrared propane heater. Uh, I recorded this in the middle of February and um, it's a bit cold outside in Northeast Ohio. Took another ride on the struggle bus um, with a less than sharp drill bit and a less than adequate drill press. Um, I did, I did end up replacing this bit. I found another one, but still haven't found a replacement drill press yet. Can't figure out where I left that thing. Rather than watch me struggle to drill seven holes, uh, we'll skip up to the good part. Uh, here I'm getting everything fixtured up for welding. I want to fixture this up at a 90 degree angle, so I'm using one of my welding squares. I modeled these in Fusion 360 and had them cut out on a water jet. Uh, I took inspiration from some that are commercially available. I'll put a link to the video in the corner. And uh, here I'm setting that base plate. Now right here, I don't realize that I've got this flipped around that the one hole should be in the back and the two holes should be near the vertical piece. I'll, I'm sure that I'll figure this out and fix it. Intention is to lag screw this down in my workbench and those two holes are to lag into the perimeter two by four and that one hole is going to go into oh i guess i didn't realize i screwed up hmm. well i'm i'm sure i'll figure it out before i finish welding it this, these are just tacks but that one hole is going to go to another two by four that spans the width of the workbench so i'm sure that i'll figure this out and maybe figure it out Well, these, like I said, these are only tacks. These are easy to break off. As long as I don't start finish welding and, oh, oh well. Recently, I've been having some problems with this welder using um, C25 gas and solid wire. I've got an air leak somewhere in the system, and it's causing a bunch of porosity in every single weld. I think I know where it's at, but I'm going to need to get the mill up and running so I can make a new part because parts for this welder are no longer available. So until then, um, I'm just going to be using some flux core weld, welding wire that I picked up at Tractor Supply. Really enjoy welding. It's one of my favorite things to do in the shop. If I had to do my career over again, this might be near the top of the list. If I had to pick any welding process, I think it, I would pick TIG though as my favorite. If you're a welder, I'm curious, drop a comment. Tell me what your favorite welding process is. the greatest welds in the world but I'd say they're respectable the bracket's a bit warm still but I want to go ahead and get it mounted to the workbench I want to make sure that it's not uh, that when I mount the head onto this that it will clear any obstructions
It was at this moment he knew. He f***ed up. <clears throat> oh, I can't believe you screwed that up. Well, a little late in realizing I screwed that up, but he here we are. So instead of lag screwing it down into some 2x4s, I'll use a couple of carriage bolts from the bottom. With the bracket in place, I'm going to go ahead and use, yet again, this borrowed engine hoist to strap up the remnants of the head and move it over to the workbench. With the engine hoist taking some of the weight of the head, I'm loosening the draw bar now to remove that collet so I can lift it off of this head installation tool. I think I have this fairly well balanced, but I'm taking it up slowly because I want to be sure that when it comes off of the tool, it just doesn't swing upside down and end up creating more problems. Now it's just a matter of muscling this thing into position so that I can fit these bolts into the bracket and through the head. Since these were supposed to be lag screws instead of carriage bolts coming up, I didn't anticipate that they would be in the way. So just cutting them off with an angle grinder so that I can fit the bolts pass them and in into the holes. <clears throat> well, I guess I didn't do that great of a job measuring for these holes because I got three of them to fit, but not the fourth. In all reality, I only really needed two. With the head safely secured to the workbench, uh, I can go ahead and put the engine hoist away and take these straps off. Well, next on the agenda, we'll be removing and disassembling what's remaining of the front and back gear assemblies. Well, that's it for this video. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps a lot. Thanks for watching.